Today, I'm going for a first run in the Brooks Ravenna 11. Eleven point two four miles, about nine minutes and thirty seconds per mile, and one hundred and thirty seven beats per minute for my run commute today. Taking the Brooks Ravenna eleven to and from work on what was supposed to be a recovery day, easy running to and from work, but the wind, the weather, the water all had very different ideas for me. Uh, but before I get into my thoughts on the Brooks Ravenna 11, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me for the purpose of review by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one's paying me to make the video and no one's paying me to wear the shoe and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or footage before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now, the Brooks Ravenna 11 is a type of shoe that I normally don't review. Uh, I tend to try and stay away from stability shoes. Stability shoes in the past usually have some extra firmness or hardness in the midsole uh, in order to protect you from yourself, I think at least is the idea. Uh, and what that ends up doing for me as someone that, even though I do pronate and I do probably what is considered by most of you over pronate, for me, when, it, when I run in a stability shoe, it just sends up extra impacts straight up my leg and into my knee and ends up hurting me after a couple of miles. And so I tend to stay away from them, but this isn't exactly your traditional type of stability shoe. Now, I think starting with the Ravenna 10, although I never ran in that shoe myself, I think Brooks switched this shoe from being a stability shoe in the traditional sense where there's like extra stiffness in different parts of the midsole. Uh, instead, they've gone to what's called this guide rail technology, which is something that you're seeing kind of on the sides that run parallel along the length of your foot. And what it does is instead of having extra firmness, like in the midsole, like in this area, or maybe in this area down here, it's just a regular midsole throughout the shoe. And instead it has these higher areas up here that kind of keep your ankle in place, kind of like, well, guide rails that keep your ankle from turning inward or outward too much. So it's an interesting idea, one that's not exactly new, but I think a newer trend when it comes to stability shoes. And for me, it's something that I definitely appreciate. I felt like I was getting kind of the best of both worlds where I had a midsole that I liked uh, and a little bit of extra kind of support in the foot strike. And so what it felt like to me was like, for the most part, I was just running on this Biomogo DNA midsole that Brooks has. I felt like it's a pretty good midsole to run in. The previous Brooks that I've spent a lot of time in was the Brooks Ghost 11 GTX. I wasn't exactly a huge fan of that shoe. I felt like I was fighting it a lot, but with this shoe, it's a 10 millimeter heel drop shoe with 9.4 ounces as a listed weight. I felt like this was a pretty good running shoe. I enjoyed running in it. I have, have been I have been able to run at least a little bit. I did took a little test drive in the Brooks Launch 6, the Brooks shoe from last year, and I felt like there was a lot of similarities in terms of the foot strike and the feel and how the shoe felt on foot to that shoe. The upper's nice and comfortable. It's a tra traditional running shoe upper. The lacing felt fine. The tongue is a little bit padded, just a little bit of padding in the heel area. So uh, just a regular standard running shoe fit and feel. Everything felt uh, right. It just felt like a good, decent running shoe. Wasn't too heavy on foot. But I could also tell as I was uh, in the middle of a very high mileage week, and I was a little bit tired for those moments when the foot strike was getting a little bit sloppy. I could kind of sense the guide rails keeping me in place. Overall, it was essentially like uh, overall it was essentially like the feeling of running with something like hugging my foot 
in a good way. Uh, it's kind of a weird sensation to explain. I feel like if I were a baseball player and, you know, a lot of times with the baseball players stepping up to the plate, they're wearing just like a lot more armor. They've got like the things on their elbow, maybe on their shoulder, the extra little part that covers their face on the helmet, like all that extra stuff. It kind of felt like I was a running version of that, but all in like a good way. It was very comforting to have that. Uh, up towards the end of the run today, though, of my two runs, I did start to feel like there was a little bit of extra firmness like right underneath the heel of my foot and I did feel a little bit of not poking but I felt a little bit of pressure right under my arches or like kind of back of the foot where the arch kind of meets the heel and I think that's probably more likely uh, a break-in issue in terms of getting the shoe and my foot kind of to meet in the middle and kind of figure each other out so I suspect that that will go away overall I feel like for a stability shoe for someone who maybe normally runs in a neutral shoe, but is looking for something with maybe a little bit some more support. This could be a good middle ground. I'm not sure if you're a heavy overpronator or supinator and you needed a specific stability shoe, if this would be enough for you just having the guide rails. But for me, it's something that I think that I can run in and I'll put more miles in it to kind of see if that opinion changes over the mile. So hit the subscribe button so that you could see the follow-up video, the 100 mile review of this shoe. But like a lot of shoes that Roadrunner Sports send me that aren't like on my list of things to review, I'm always pleasantly surprised by their choices of what they send. Uh, I think that this is um, a nice, pleasant little surprise. I actually like it. I'm not mad about the support structures that are in here. None of them seem to be too aggressive and assertive. I certainly like this a lot more than the Brooks Ghost 11 GTX that I ran in. The midsole is fun to run in which is not something I was expecting when I put on this shoe. That's all I have to say about the Ravenna 11. If you have any other questions about the shoe, put them in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you about it a little bit more down there. But before I go, I do wanna talk about a new charity run for this week. This week, the charity run of the week is gonna be Stephanie Ryan, who is raising money for UNICEF and running the Boston Marathon. Team UNICEF, the team that she's running for, is dedicated to helping malnourished kids. So uh, something that I was very happy to donate $70 of my own money, and I'll post links in the description in case you'd like to learn more. I do also wanna take this time to talk about the charity runner of last week, John Henry, and talk about all the good work that you guys have done in donating to help him and his fundraising efforts. Now this page was a little bit more difficult to work with because it's one of those pages where the donations are listed in alphabetical order, but here are the people that donated last week. We had Brad Lamb coming in with the hashtag Team Kofuzi, uh, and because everything's alphabetical, I asked you guys to put like a little hashtag or some notation to let me know who you guys are. Brad Lamb was a charity runner from the week before John Henry, and he's paying it forward as well and donating to the charity runner of the week. Darwin Dialde with the hashtag Team Kofuzi. Delvison Castillo with also with the hashtag Team Kofuzi. Kofuzi Run Club also donated. Now on this particular page, it doesn't list like the monetary values that people donated, but I know that Kofuzi Run Club has been coming in pretty much every single week this year with $71, just $1 more than I'm donating. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. Kyle MeQ Running. Uh, Kyle is someone who also is on YouTube. He's donated money as well. Marielle Duvall with the Kofuzi hashtag. Michael Mansfield donating once again. Michael Yi donating again. Hashtag Team Kofuzi. Nina Gu, again, another regular in the Charity Runner donations. Peter Y, another regular. Pivo, which is a new name, I think, uh, with the hashtag Team Kofuzi. Thanks, Pivo, for donating. And we had Steven DeGalen, another familiar name to me. So happy to see some familiar names and some new names this week as well. If I missed you guys, I'm so sorry about it. It's not that I meant to. I didn't. I don't want to overlook you guys, but it's just this page made it a little harder for me to follow. Stephanie Ryan's page is a lot easier because it does everything in chronological order. So I'll be able to see definitely from kind of like announcing her as a charity runner today 
to next week to see exactly like where everyone is and who's all donating. But, but by my math in the week since John Henry was announced as his charity runner of the week, we've raised a grand total of $353 just this week for that charity runner. And I think that's absolutely amazing. Another testament as to what we can do when we run together as a pack. So thank you so much for donating and thank you so much for making it to the end of this video, everybody. And I will see you guys in the next one. Yo, what's going on?